Talmudic Jews are lost pagans. And they are. I'm going to prove that in this study from the scriptures. Uh, they came out and they, or they come out and they say this thing of uh, Hashem this and Hashem that. It's the will of Hashem. Hashem, Hashem. What does Hashem mean? I've heard this before and I heard somebody say that's a false god. Um, and I thought, okay, I don't know what Hashem means. Well, did some, been doing some research into the whole thing. Hashem simply means the name. It's kind of an odd thing. You know, so God is, you know, we'll just say the name. I worship the name. Whatever, whatever the name wants. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What's the name of the Lord? Well, the scriptures say what the name of the Lord is. I'm going to show it to you here. Um, and again, you know, well, we have this special relationship with God and whatever because we're the Jewish people, the chosen people of God and, and things. Uh, yeah, okay, but you rejected Jesus Christ, so you're kind of in trouble with the Lord right now. That's the reason for the book of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ to the Jewish people. That's what the whole future is about. It's not for the church to be purified. You only believe that if you're a papist. But um, please understand what I'm saying here. There's no mystery when you believe the Bible. The problem is with the Talmudic Jews, they don't believe the Bible. They don't want the Bible in their lives. They replace both Old and New Testaments with their Talmud and their other traditions of men. But let's turn first to Exodus chapter 6. I'm going to show you what the name of God is. It's spelled out plainly. Kind of weird. It reminds me of that uh, fruity guy, the prince or something. I think is some rock singer, you know, for a while, and then he came out and called himself the artist or something or the symbol or I forget what it was. <laughs> weird. Um, there's no mystery who God is and what his name is. Exodus chapter six, verse two and three, and God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty, but by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. So he comes in the name of God Almighty, but his name is Jehovah. So when I see people saying Yahweh, uh, well, that's only two syllables. Jehovah, that's three. And you get into a whole big study on that, all that stuff there. But um, there's three parts to God, not two. So you say Yahweh. Well, uh, no, it doesn't work that way. It's Jehovah. Let me show you another one. Psalm 83, verse 18. In most new versions, by the way, most of the Vatican versions, they take out the name of Jehovah. Hmm. And you get the Jehovah's Witnesses, and they actually take the word Lord, Kurios, or something like that, I think, in the New Testament, and they just replace every time Kurios shows up, they put in Jehovah. And you can actually see it. I'll show it here in a minute. Let me just show you that. Uh, but turn to Psalm 83. Psalm 83. Um, we'll read there. But let me show you here. I actually have the Jehovah's Witness uh, interlinear. Interlinear. The Kingdom Interlinear Translation of the Greek Scriptures. Right there you have it. See if it will focus on that. Ah, come on. There it is. Okay. And if you look in the inside of it here, it actually says, um, Greek text. The Greek text that we have used as the basis for the New World Translation is the widely accepted Westcott and Hort text uh, by reason of its acknowledged excellence. And it goes down through and it says um, that this... But we have also taken into consideration other texts, including those prepared by D. Eberhard Nessel, the Spanish Jesuit scholar, Jose Maria Bover, and another Jesuit scholar, A. Merck. Okay, so you can see the thing that it comes from the Jesuit text right there. Read it, the highlighted yellow portion. The Jesuits had a hand in this. Hmm, interesting. I like to show that to Jehovah's Witnesses when they come over, you know, and whatever, and they just kind of, oh, I don't know what to do with that. Um, see if I can find an example here where they change the name Lord to uh, Jehovah. <clears throat> ah, come on. I don't have all of them highlighted. There's only a couple. You know what? I want to go to actual bookmarks here. That would probably help. Okay. Um, 
you know, the, the famous thing where Jesus is up there being tempted of the devil in the wilderness, and he says, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Um, well, here's the Nestle's text right here. You can see. Okay. There's Curios, Lord. But look at the text. Look how they translated it. They put Jehovah in. You must not put Jehovah your God to the test. That's <laughs> not what the Greek text says. Even the corrupt Greek, the corrupt nestles there that they use in this. So just put that in a little extra thing on the study here. But uh, Jehovah is the name that's given in your King James Bible. Four times it's given and then three more times as a place. Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Nissi, Jehovah Jireh. Those three. So three place names and uh, four times it's used as his name. Seven is God's number. And yet the new versions, which are just fine to use, and they take out the name Jehovah. Uh, not good. Psalm 83, verse 18. Um, that men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. Is there any question there? And again, this is all Old Testament. I'm not going to the accursed New Testament for the, you know, Talmudic Jews. They reject the New Testament, but supposedly they are for the Tanakh, you know, the Old Testament. And yet it's saying Jehovah. There's no question. It's not saying, well, just call me the name. No, uh, my name is Jehovah. God is saying there. Let's go to the next one. Isaiah chapter 12. Isaiah chapter 12. I'll show you another one here. Isaiah 12, verses 1 through 6. And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Thou wast, thou, though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou uh, comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day... Shall ye say, praise the Lord, call upon his name. Don't call him the name, call upon his name. What is the name there that you're supposed to call him? What is his name? Jehovah, verse 2. Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. The name of Jehovah. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. Uh, this is known in all the earth. Cry and out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. In the midst of thee? Hmm. You might want to study premillennialism. Jesus Christ is coming back down here and he's going to rule and reign on the earth. Physically on the earth. The Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Who's he talking about? Jehovah. See, God has a couple different names if you study your Bible. Jesus was his name that he had when he was here on the earth. And I'm going to show you something else about that. Um, Isaiah chapter 26. Go there next. Isaiah 26. Beginning in verse 1. And in that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation with will God a point for walls and bulwarks. Open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. All the nations go up to see the king in the city of Jerusalem. How could that happen if he's not physically there? Hmm. And again, you know, it's so weird because these Talmudic Jews are saying that their Mashiach uh, is not a man in terms of, a, or excuse me, he's just a man. He's not God. Kind of weird. Why would you go worship a man? Hmm. Verse 3. And I'd like to ask the question too. If he's just a man. Or you know. He's not God. He's not immortal. Um, does that mean he's a sinner? Is your Messiah a sinner? Mine isn't. My Savior's not. I'm not a Jew. So you know. I don't have to look for a Messiah. But. Um, 
Interesting thing there. Verse 3, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. For he bringeth down that them that dwell on high, the lofty city, he layeth it low. He layeth it low even to the ground, he bringeth it even to the dust. The foot shall tread it down, even the feet of the poor, and the steps of the needy. The way of the just is upright, uprightness. Uh, thou most upright just dost weigh the path of the just. Yea, in the way of thy judgments, O Lord, have we waited for thee. The desire of our soul is to thy name and to the remembrance of thee. With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For within, or for when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Let favor be showed to the wicked, uh, yet will not will he not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness will he deal unjustly, and will not behold the majesty of the Lord. Interesting, because that's very much what the mingled papal Juden do. Lord, when thine hand is lifted up, they will not see, but they shall see and be ashamed for their envy at the people. Yea, the fire of thine enemies shall devour them. Lord, thou wilt ordain peace for us, for thou also hast wrought all our works in us. O Lord our God, other lords beside thee have had dominion over us, but thee only will we make mention of thy name. Make mention of thy name. Not just, we'll just call him the name. That's not what it's saying. They are dead, and they shall not live. They are deceased, they shall not rise. Therefore hast thou visited and destroyed them, and made all their memory to perish. Thou hast increased the nation, O Lord, thou hast increased the nation. Thou art glorified, thou hadst removed it far unto all the ends of the earth. Notice, this is a future thing. He's saying, you're being glorified here. We're glorifying you in person, in the midst of us. And thou hadst removed it far unto all the ends of the earth. The diaspora, they call it. You know, all the Jews were kicked out of the land of Israel. Now they're coming back. And if you're a Jew, you need to get back to Israel. Because that's where the blessings and the promises are for you. And God's protection, too, by the way, I might add. Um, oh, where am I at here? Verse 16. Lord, in trouble have they visited thee. They poured out a prayer when thy, while thy chastening was upon them. Like as a woman with child, hmm, that draweth near the time of her delivery, is in pain, and crieth out in her pangs, so have we been in thy sight, O Lord. We have been with child, we have been in pain, we have, as it were, brought forth wind, we have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Huh. Like a woman with child that draweth near the time of her delivery, is in pain. And crieth out in her pangs, so have we been in thy sight, O Lord. What does the Bible say? What did Jesus Christ say? You know, the disciples come to him in Matthew chapter 24 and they say, Tell us the signs of thy coming and of the end of the world. And Jesus says uh, about, you know, wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes, famines, pestilence, and whatever. And he says, All these are the beginning of sorrows. Hmm. Go to Jeremiah chapter 30. I'm going to show you some interesting tie-ins here. We're like those that are a woman that's with child, the Bible's saying there, of the Jewish people. Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 5 through 7. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Huh, a man travail with child? Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Now, I've said this thing so many times, you're a regular viewer, you're probably saying, here we go again. Yes, here we go again. Renewing your mind. Saying it over and over again. Um, it's the time of Jacob's trouble. Alright? Not the church's trouble. 
this time period that's coming, Daniel's 70th week, the time of Jacob's trouble, it's never called the Great Tribulation. That's a description. There shall be Great Tribulation. It's talking about it being a very bad time. It's not saying the Great Tribulation. All right, Christians are appointed to go through Tribulation and Great Tribulation sometimes, but we're not appointed to go through the time of Jacob's trouble or Daniel's 70th week. It's not for us. Right? It's the most simple way that I can do the whole pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, whatever. Uh, the body of Christ is going to be called up before the Antichrist is unleashed. How do you know? Because John goes up, he sees 24 elders and then a great multitude of angels around about the throne. In the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. It's so simple. <laughs> And all posties come out and they all say, oh, I, I think you're wrong. It's a pre-trib fib. It's with John Nelson Darby. I've covered it all. I've covered it all. If you really want the truth, you'll find it. But you want to convince yourself that you're going into this time? You probably are because you're lost. I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to tell you. Well, it's not a salvation issue. Oh, yes, it's a salvation issue. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Okay. Um, John chapter 10, I think it is, uh, or 11, I not in my notes right now. Jesus is the resurrection. The catching up of the body of Christ is the resurrection. So how can you say I, you get your the resurrection timing all mixed up and you're going to have to go into a time to prove yourself, to prove that you need to be purified and everything else through suffering, you know, and I need to come prove how strong I am and I can endure to the end and everything else. Then you don't believe in Jesus Christ fully and completely paying for your sins on the cross. Yes, it is a salvation issue. Maybe not early on because people are deceived and whatever else, but it is a salvation issue. But let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We'll go to the New Testament. Everything up to this point was all Old Testament, talking about the name of the Lord, which is Jehovah in the Old Testament. All right. Now we're going to go to the New Testament. So if you're Jewish out there and you're watching this, you can't say, oh, you know, it's, in the, it's New Testament, hate speech or whatever. I've been in the Old Testament the entire time. But I'm going to show you the tie-in, how the Old Testament ties into the New Testament. What did we read in Isaiah chapter 26? Um, we read about the Jews going through childbearing pains, likened to a woman in pain. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 6 talks about as a woman in travail. All right. What's it say here? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 1 through 3. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them upon, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Who's the they? Talking about the Jews. Talking about lost people. But specifically about the Jews. How do you know? Because you go back to the Old Testament and you find the references. Uh, Sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. They don't escape. We, the body of Christ, do. And if you're Jewish right now and you're not saved, I would suggest you get saved because then you can escape too. Very important. But see how things tie together. And they do. But I'll show you another name. Isaiah chapter 7. You want your uh, Messiah revealed to you? I'm going, to, I'm going to do it right now. Isaiah 7 and verse 14. Let me show you another name of God. Isaiah 7 verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. The Jews require a sign. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 talks about that. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Let's go to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1 to the Old Testament. You say, no, 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 you meant to go to the New Testament, to the book of Matthew. Well, it's in a book of, it's a collection of books called the New Testament, but it's not doctrinally in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 1 is doctrinally in the Old Testament. What? Huh? Yeah, read Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15 through 17. A testament is of force after men are dead. Jesus is the mediator of the New Testament. 
he brought in the New Testament when he died on the cross, not before then. So Matthew chapter 1 is in the Old Testament, doctrinally speaking. Collection of new books, but it's a transitional book. It goes Old Testament to New Testament. So what's being written here is actually being written to Jews. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. It wasn't some kind of a wicked thing like the Talmud type of says. It's some Roman soldier and Mary, she was a whore or something like that. Where's your basis for that? This book right here predates your stupid Talmud by hundreds of years. This said Mary was a virgin. Your Bible in the Old Testament says Mary's a virgin. So you're rejecting what God put out from what a bunch of wicked, satanic people put out in the Talmud. Verse 20, But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. That's what it means. Emmanuel, God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. See, why wasn't it Emmanuel? Because the Lord said to, do, to say Jesus there. That's why. And you see, there's some prophetic stuff. Again, I can't go into a whole big study. It's not the purpose of this one. But I believe that there's some prophetic things there that in the future he'll be called Emmanuel. But see, God has many names. Again, please understand that. It isn't that, well, God is, can only be called one, you know, the name. Again, think about the logic here, okay? I know logic escapes a lot of the Talmudic Jews, but try for a minute here. Um, <clears throat> by calling God the singular name, or definitive article is the singular name, singular, then that means he would only have one name. Uh, no, God has multiple names, even in the Old Testament. Even if you want to reject the New Testament, he has multiple names in the Old Testament. And here in the New Testament, he is Emmanuel, God with us, but his name is to be called Jesus. God gives an angel the commandment and says, call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. His people. See? Uh, Christianity is not a Gentile religion. It's a Jewish religion. Okay, um, Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, turn there in your Bible, your King James Bible, don't waste your time with the Vatican versions, they're no good, Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 through 11. Okay. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He's in the form of God. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay. Um, and made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Um, we are in, made after God's likeness. And Jesus made himself in the likeness of men. He came down in a body that had a body, soul, spirit. Three in one. If you don't believe that, then you're denying scripture. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. So, well, see, there's two different ones. God is exalting him. The soul is exalting the flesh. That's what's going on there. They are separate. In terms of soul and flesh, they can separate, but then they can all be together in one. All right? And he's given him a name which is above every name. 
What is that name? You know, Hashem? No. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hmm. So, uh, Emmanuel, yeah, good name. Absolutely. But the uh, Lord wanted to give him an even more important name. And that name is Jesus. You better get on to that name. And uh, for all the wicked people out there, the synagogue of Satan, people that say that they are Jews and they're not, they're coming out and they're saying, oh, it's Yeshua or Yahashua or Yahawashi. That's my favorite one. Um, sounds like some kind of motorcycle or something, you know, Yamaha, you know, Kawasaki or something, Yahawashi. <laughs> stupid. Um, absolutely stupid. No, it's Yeshua. If you want to use the Hebrew name for Jesus, it's Yeshua. Okay. Not Yahashua. That's Joshua. Joshua didn't die on the cross to pay for your sins. And I know they come from the same root word. I, I get it. All right. But it's Jesus is the name. All right. Um, if you're going to be an English speaking person, if you're Jewish, you live in Israel or something, you speak Hebrew, say Yeshua. Absolutely fine. That's your language. Fine. Great. Wonderful. If you speak English and you use an English Bible, then you need to say Jesus. All right. And as I've said, I said it in a walk and talk thing I did uh, a while back here, a couple days ago. Uh, I've gotten into spiritual encounters and things, and it's the name of Jesus that has power. Okay. Um, I'm not, I didn't try to pull out the name Yeshua and, ooh, watch the devil's flee. No, it's the name Jesus. Okay. Jesus is the name that's above every name. All right. And if you write a bunch of blasphemous stuff about, against the, the name of Jesus, I'm just deleting your comments. Let me tell you right now. Okay. I don't have time for satanic nonsense to whom we gave place by subjection. No, not for an hour. That the truth of the gospel may continue with you. The book of Galatians talks about that. I don't have time for people blaspheming my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right, you can, you're free to your own opinions, but keep it on your own channel. I don't need blasphemy in my comments or profanity either. I don't allow that. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. We'll go there next. Uh, we, we're not really sure what the name is. We'll just say, we'll just call him the name. I mean, that's... Talk about an impersonal thing. What a terrible thing. Somebody come up to you and they say, um, hello, Mr. Name, or whatever, or the name to me. Well, my name is Brian. Oh, 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 we can't say that name. Uh, it's, it wouldn't be right to say that name. We'll just call you the name. Um, hey, the name. What about this? Hey, the name. Where could you tell us? Is there a good store in the area? The name. No, there's no mystery in Scripture. It's Jehovah in the Old Testament, the name that God used and said, I'm going to tell you this name here. It's my name. Use that name. Um, and then he says, I'm going to send, you know, a virgin will conceive. There's a sign coming. You'll see this. And his name is going to be Emmanuel. Jesus' name is Emmanuel. It's just another one of the names of God. So you can call Jesus Emmanuel. Or you can say his name is Emmanuel. It's also Jehovah. And it's, most importantly, Jesus. You don't have to make excuses for it. It doesn't give you special extra spiritual power points or something if you say Yeshua. All right? You don't need to do that. Acts chapter 4, verse 5. Let's start there. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. Very impressive showing, I'm sure. There, all these great elders and learned doctors and everything, rabbi this, rabbi that. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or what by, by what name have ye done this? So this, I mean, it's amazing. You go back, old, you know, way back there to the first century. By what name have you done this? You know, we do our things by the name, you know, Hashem. Who are, you know, what's your name of your God? <laughs> Not much changes. Verse 8, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and the elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. 
This is the stone which is, was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Boy, I get their Masonic reference there. Not that this is written by Freemasons like some of the dummies believe out there. This, this, why would Freemasons write this book when it condemns them? Okay, But the Jews that are involved in the Freemason, the Freemasonic system, the third degree, the master, you know, you give them the third degree. You ever hear that saying? Now you know where it came from. But the whole master mason thing, the stone which the builders rejected, the same as made the head of the corner. Huh. Interesting there. The keystone, the secret handshake, and all the other stuff, and the Hiram Abiff, and all the other things. You can watch that. The Masonic rituals on YouTube, you can see it. Verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. What name? Hashem? Just walk around saying the name, the name. No, the name is Jesus. Read the context. It's Jesus. But you reject him. We don't want to hear that name. We go, no, we can't allow that name in the Masonic lodges. No, no, you can't say the name of Jesus. We don't want that name over here on our streets. No, Jesus. No, no, we can't hear that. And for all the Hebrew roots cult people out there, don't say the name Jesus. Don't say the name Jesus. We can't hear the name Jesus. It's it, it's from this and it's it, all these other things and telling a bunch of lies about the origin of the name of Jesus. Uh, say Yahashua, something else other than Jesus. Why? Because that's the name, the only name given among men, whereby we must be saved. Verse 13, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, like a lot of you are saying about me, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Oh, well, I don't appreciate this. I don't like what you're saying, and it's very offensive to me, and whatever. Mm-hmm. Isaiah 64. Let's go back to Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64, verse 6 through 12. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Oh, Hashem, He doesn't judge people's sins. He's, he's okay with people. He loves people. And whenever He doesn't talk about sin, um, then what do you do with that? Maybe your Hashem guy doesn't. I don't know who he is because he's just called the name. But uh, Jehovah, Emmanuel, Jesus. Yeah, he looks at your righteousness as filthy rags. Kind of funny because it's... Reminds me, you know, in my simple little uneducated, ignorant brain, I look and I say, you know, it's filthy rags, kind of like a muddy towel, or you could say a towel mud. <laughs> you know, nothing to it, of course. Um, verse 7, And there is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee, for thou hast hid thy face from us, and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, thou art our father. We are the clay, and thou art the potter. Thou art potter. And we all are the work of thy hand. Be not wroth uh, very sore, O Lord, neither remember iniquity forever. Behold, see, we beseech thee, we are all thy people. Thy holy cities are a wilderness, Zion is a wilderness, Jerusalem a desolation. Our holy and our beautiful house where our fathers praised thee is burned up with fire, and all our pleasant things are laid waste. Wilt thou refrain thyself for these things, O Lord? Wilt thou hold thy peace? Wilt thou hold thy peace and afflict us very sore? Um, very interesting there, because that's the future for the Talmudic Jews, the filthy rag Talmud Jews. Um, finally, let's go to Revelation chapter. I'll show you another reason why a lot of these um, people, uh, why a lot of them reject Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 through 9. 
And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, the Bible, not the Talmud, and hast not denied my name. Hmm. Well, we're not really sure what God's name is, so we'll just say Hashem. Um, then you're denying his name. Because it's clearly given in the Old Testament. Your Tanakh. Old Testament. And then it's given in the New Testament. And you see, Emmanuel is born and he's called Jesus. Verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. There's a lot of people out there, these Talmudic Jews, that for financial, political reasons, they have mingled themselves. They call us dirty Gentile dogs, and yet they went and they bred with the dogs. Well, if you lie down with dogs, you get up with fleas, don't you? Uh-huh. And, um... They've been fleeing into every nation. A oh, little bit of tie in there. But it just blows my mind to think of that these people have just made this elaborate system and it's all based on denying Jesus Christ and walking around and saying, we have no idea what his real name is. We'll just, you know, we'll just say the name. The name. That's our God. The name. Hashem this and Hashem does that and um, what you need to realize, if you're Jewish out there, um, I'm the one that actually loves you. And the New Testament is actually very pro-Jewish. It's not an anti-Jew book. It's not anti-Semitic. Um, your real enemy? The rabbis. The rabbis that keep Isaiah 53 from you tell you it's about Israel, not about Jesus. Uh, the rabbis that keep a lot of the Old Testament prophecies about Jesus Christ that they would look on him whom they've pierced and mourn for him. Um, all the nations would go up to Jerusalem to worship the king, and you tied into the New Testament. All the tie-ins back and forth between Old Testament and New Testament. You watch this ministry, I will show them to you. And the reason I got them is not because I went to a Torah institute someplace or to Bible college seminary. It's because the Holy Spirit of God shows me these things. And I can show you. That's the whole thing. See, you get into this Talmudic stuff and whatever, all these other traditions of men, you have to go through special training to understand all of it because it doesn't make logical sense. I can show you this stuff and you can say, yeah, there's some tie-ins there. Oh, huh. And I won't charge you an arm and a leg to do it either. My videos are free. So make of that what you will. But that's going to be it. I have one more study, and it's called Jesus Christ in the Torah. I'm going to show you that Jesus Christ is in the Old Testament, but he goes by a different name. That is going to be it. See you in the next study. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.